Sunday morning, family. It's Lady Mara with this week's VP News and Views. Here at Vernon Park, we celebrate Christian marriages. Ronnie and Thea DeVance, 29 years on September 18th. Hey kids, Children's Church will take place today. For the month of September, the topic will be faith. Children will worship with us in the main sanctuary before making their way to Children's Church. Calling all men, join the Men of Destiny third Saturdays monthly, 12.30 to 2.30. Don't forget, Discipleship 101, Making Disciples and Disciple Makers takes place on Sundays prior to worship from 8.30 until 9.30 a.m. Ladies, you should be reading or have read the book Fervent by Priscilla Schreier. Our next Women of Purpose Series for Sisters event will take place on Saturday, September 24th, 12.30 until 3, and it will be facilitated by Reverend Tasha Jackson. See you there. Mother Carr's Farm needs volunteers on the following Saturdays. Please call the church office if you have questions. It's time to get washed at the park. Vernon Park's baptism is taking place on Sunday, October 2nd. Call the church office for more information. Save the date and join life. Living in Faith Every Day on Sunday, October 9th, 12 p.m. until 2 p.m. for a balloon release and fellowship dinner following service. For more information, please see Reverend Alice Elsey. We are a family that prays together. Please keep the names on our sick list in your prayers. Sister Laureen Johnson and pray for our bereaved deacons Daryl and Mildred Robinson in the loss of her nieces, Sister Deshandra Tate and Sister Kendra Tate, Brother Kevin and Sister Jackie Harris in the loss of her mother, Sister Laureen Jackson, Sister Beverly Perkins in the loss of her grandson, Brother Kanye Perkins, Thank you, family, for your continued cooperation with exiting directly following benediction. We truly appreciate your help. That concludes the video announcements for VP News and Views. Thank you for joining us. Yes, my sister. I want to share with you this morning a passage from the book of 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. Verses 23 down to verse 27. I want to read it for you quickly. Are they servants of Christ? And I'm out of my mind to talk like this. I am more. I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, and been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the forty lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I've been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my own countrymen, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false brothers. Verse 27, I have labored and toiled, and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst, and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. You may be seated. And I would like to share with you this morning on the theme, Untold Stories. 
untold stories. The Bible which we believe is the divinely inspired word of God, which we also believe reveals the will of God for humankind, is also a book of stories. It contains the mysterious, eternal, awe-inspiring stories about God, about His grace, about His mercy, about His patience, His long-suffering and loving pursuit of sinful men throughout all generations. It also contains stories about us with all that is known about us, all that is common to us, it contains stories about godly and righteous people who walked with God, who obeyed God, who knew Him and had intimate relationships with Him, and who became models for all humankind to emulate. But there are also stories about all that is evil and shameful and undesirable about men, fleshly men, sinful men and women, wicked people, with characteristics that are still present and active in our age. Now the stories of the Bible comes in two forms. First, some stories are so significant, so life-changing, had such great impact on nations, on history, on families, generations. They were present in families and they were preserved with and written down by authors so that the world will know and that generations following can learn and emulate them. These people who were so close to God were people like us. We often think that the folks in the Bible were different from us, that they had an advantage over us, but they were just like us. And we think of men like Abraham and Joseph and David and Solomon and Job, just to name a few whose stories remain in the Bible. Then there are a few instances in the Bible when people wrote their own stories. And our text is an excellent example of this. Paul was not only the most prolific writer in the New Testament, but in all of his writings, he's telling us his own story. And you can find his story starts in the book of Acts. And in all the little letters that he wrote, they are personal accounts of his, his own personal story. Yeah. Now, this text emphasizes some painful parts of his story. Mm-hmm. Imprisonments. Yeah. And I suspect that maybe some folks listening to me this morning who have been to prison. Uh, yeah. And those of us who have never been there have the slightest idea. Paul says, I've been in prison several times. <coughs> he talks about different kinds of beatings. Yes. 39 strokes a few times. He was shipwrecked. He was hungry. He was rejected by his own people. He had a rough time. Yes, sir. Now, as I read this, if I, this account of Paul's story, and reflected on the untold stories that we have, each of us. Three things came to mind and jumped out of me and got my attention. I want to share them with you this morning. The first thing that I gleaned from Paul's experience and his expression of his story is this. There are some uncomfortable truths that all of us have to face. Say that again uncomfortable truths. See, saved and sanctified people, people who are filled with the Holy Ghost, people who live holy 
and peaceful lives. Yeah. Yeah. People who go to church yeah. every Sunday, yeah. give their tithes and sing and raise holy hands. People who are in the church and serve faithfully. All of that does not qualify us to go through life without any struggles. The fact is, none of us is exempt from the ravages of life and the attacks from the devil. We do not get a pass. Man, person, I wish we did. But none of us, because we are saved, gives us the freedom to get a pass so we don't have any struggles and we don't face the struggles from the devil. In fact, Jesus warned us in John chapter 16, verse 33. He said this, In the world you shall, not may or perchance, in the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good courage. I have overcome the world. And if I overcame the world, you can do it too. Yes. Now, now this word tribulation is a dis has some disturbing uh, meanings. It means pressure. Hard pressure. It means afflictions. It means anguish. It means heavy burdens. It means persecution and it means trouble. It is in this context that we experience parts of our story that we hardly ever talk about. Here is the other uncomfortable truth. We love, we celebrate, and enjoy the fact that we are saved as we should. Oh, we give glowing testimony. We sing and we raise holy hands and we thank God that we are saved and we should celebrate the fact that we are saved. Amen. But the idea of suffering for Jesus, the idea that the gospel may, may cast us in a place that makes us suffer somewhat, the idea that that the gospel, even though we are saved, the gospel sometimes makes us feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. It's something we want to avoid. Oh, be honest with yourself. Right. 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 Yeah. Yes, None of us like to be persecuted. Right. None of us like to be uncomfortable right. because we are saved. None of us like to stick out like a sore thumb because we are saved. None of us like to be different because we are saved. We would rather just fit you with the crowd than go to church and enjoy yourselves and not have to do this thing called suffering for Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. There is a song written by Daniel Sidney Warner, who is one of the founders of the Church of God movement. You know that. He wrote a song and was put to music by a guy named Ludolf Schroeder. You don't have to remember the names. I used to sing this song at Easter time in my formative, formative years. I confess to my shame that I have not sung this song for 50 years. Because once I came to America, it's not a very popular song. Here's how the words go. It says, Who will suffer with the Savior? Anybody know that song? Who will suffer with the Savior? Take the little that remains wow. of the cup of tribulation Jesus drank in dying pain. Wow. See, we don't like the thought of suffering. But those are two uncomfortable truths that we need to remember. Number two, here's a second thing I gleaned from what Paul is saying. Like Paul, each of us have a story. Yeah. Yeah. Every one of us have a story. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how young you are, middle-aged, single, married, divorced. All of us have a story. All yes. people have a story. Yes. 
Every one of us have a story. No one is exempt. It is, not, it is a never-ending story. And we keep adding chapters as life increases. Right. Every joy and every sorrow adds a chapter mm -hmm. in your story. Every success or failure adds another chapter in your story. Every pain or pleasure adds another chapter in your story. Yeah. See, all of us unwittingly are professional authors of our own story. Yeah. We are writing our own story. Nobody has to write it for us. We have a story, every one of us. Yes, yes. Now here it is. Listen carefully. Not everything we see and not everything we hear from people on a Sunday morning tells us the whole story. Not everything we see and hear at work tells the whole story. See, all of us display our best clothes with fancy labels that we don't buy at Amazon. <laughs> we display our best clothes, our best shoes and jewelry and bags, and we dress up with HIV. What's HIV? Hair I bought. <laughs> hundreds of dollars for hair extensions, to fancy makeup. Not everything we read in our emails and our texts and our Facebook posts and tell us the whole story. Some of us may sit in high places, nice offices, love the jobs, and we drive nice cars, and people look at us and say, man, I wish I could be like that person, but we don't know their story. <laughs> their story is hidden inside that are never told. I suspect every person in, under the sound of my voice, maybe in this house, have some secrets that nobody else knows. Amen. Has some stories that have never been told. Amen. Hidden inside, deep inside, and we remember them. See, there are some women under the sound of my voice, and maybe in the house, who have been physically and sexually abused. Some women out there and maybe in here who go to bed and sleep on wet pillows because they know where their partner is. Their children who maybe have gone through the same thing, who have been molested by adults who they trusted. Yeah. Several years ago, there was a saint who was on the last mile of her journey. And I went to see her, and as I sat beside her bed and held her hand and started to minister to her, she interrupted me and said, Pastor, I need to ask for your forgiveness. And I says, for what? You haven't done me a thing. She said, Pastor, you don't know this. I haven't told anybody this. This is one of her untold stories. I haven't told anybody. But when I was a child, I was molested by a preacher in my community. I, I, I'm glad she didn't say that. <laughs> but when I was a child, I was molested by a preacher in my community, and I never told a soul. Okay. And I've never forgotten that. And I have taken it out on you. Wow. And I asked for your pardon. And I never noticed it. But she needed pardon, so I gave it to her. Their children this morning, in the house and, me, and from, I'm sure outside of the house, who are being bullied, they never tell anybody about it. Yeah. A story that hasn't been told. Yes, sir. Ah, there's some people 
maybe in the house as well, who have experienced bankruptcies. They lost everything. Shame to tell anybody about it, they have to start over. Who live with great failures. Ah, there's some folks who have been living with broken hearts. Met Mr. Right until they found out he was Mr. Wrong. <laughs> Maxed out her credit cards and entered her account and moved on. Secret nobody knows. People living with deceptions that they have held on inside. These are stories that no one knows about and everybody thinks you're happy and they wish they were like you. I don't think Pastor would mind me sharing this, but at one of our meetings, I was going through a rough time. I was struggling with some issues in my life. Some of my stories, nobody knows. And I started to share with Pastor. And when I was finished, the first one, he says, me too. <laughs> and I shared another one with him, and he, he said, me too. <laughs> and it reminded me that even my pastor and the rest of us have some stories that nobody knows yeah, about. Yeah. Listen, listen, I have some stories only my wife knows about. And I wouldn't dare start sharing them with you. I'd break down and cry. Yeah. Because I have untold stories. Yeah. Stay with me since I was a child. Yeah. And you have some stories that nobody knows about. Right. And I look at the faces and you smile and you tell me God is good and I'm being blessed and all that stuff. Good stuff. You work, you're right. But it doesn't take away your on told stories. Yeah. 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 Now, um, that maybe there's some, listen to my voice out there, and maybe there's some in the house who are saying to themselves, what's this preacher talking about? I've never experienced any of that. None of those things I've experienced. To you, I say, love and Keep on living, honey. Keep on walking. Keep on serving God. Keep on doing what you're doing. Because sooner or later, life is going to meet you somewhere. Sometime, life is going to meet you. And you'll understand what we've been talking about this morning. Untold stories. But there is good news. In spite of what all of you have gone through, in spite of what the devil has done to you, in spite of what people have done to you, in spite of how many broke times your heart has been broken and you failed and you messed up royally, it is your fault. The fact is, you're here this morning. It means you have survived. Yes. And somehow God has seen you through. Yes. Yes. And you can still smile and you can still go to church and you yes. can still see folks in the, in the street and greet them. You can still tell the saints that God is good Amen. because he led you through your stories that, that never nobody knows about. He led you through and gave you grace and sustained you so you're in church today. The last thing I noticed in the passage that I read that came to mind is this. God is a part of all our stories. Yes, I know. And I understand that when, when we're in the midst of that story, we never tell anybody about it. But we feel alone. We feel abandoned by God. We feel that God is far away. Sometimes 
confess. When we're going through those stories that are never told, we can pray. Have you ever been there? Where all you can do is grow. And remind yourselves what the scripture says that. Scripture says, even before we ask, he knows what we need. Yes. 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 That when God has moved with the feelings of our infirmities and know where we're going and know what we're going through, and even though we can't explain and we can't pray and feel as if God is far from us. Yes. The Bible says God is still there. Yes. Yes. He's part of our story. Yes, sir. We feel alone, we feel abandoned, we feel that nobody understands. And we think everybody's doing well, except me. <laughs> and you know what? They look at you and they say the same thing. <laughs> my brother, my sister, doing well, except me. Yeah. Because they don't know your story. And you don't know their story. God is, feels like he's far away. And you say to yourself, why didn't God stop me? You see, let's be honest. Some of the stories that we never tell is our fault. But let's be honest. We mess up sometimes, folks. We're human beings. And sometimes we think we know better than God. Sometimes we, we don't pay attention to the word. We don't take counsel. We think we're wise. And we do some things, and when they fall apart, it's our fault. Thank God he's merciful. And he doesn't leave us because it's our fault. He's still with us. Why didn't God stop us? God isn't going to stop us when you make your decision and move on. Philip Yancey, one of the thought-provoking authors of our generation, wrote a book that addresses some of these issues. The, the title of the book, and if you find it, read it. The book is, Where is God When It Hurts? Where is God When It Hurts? We never feel the presence of God when it's hurt. And one of the things that Philip Yancey affirms is that we're not alone when we feel that way and ask those questions. Hear this. Put this in your notes. There, there are three things that I want to share with you as I close about God's presence. Number one, remember this. The presence of God does not depend on how we feel. <laughs> oh, I don't feel his presence. Uh, I don't feel inspired. I, I don't feel the Holy Ghost around me. I, I, I don't feel the joy of the Lord. And I, I don't feel Holy Ghost power. So therefore, God is drawn. Listen, folks. The presence of God in your life does not depend on how you feel. It depends on God's promises yes, and his faithfulness. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Remember what God says. Hebrews chapter 30, verse 5. I love the words. Never. Not sometimes, but yeah. never will I leave you. And never will I forsake you. Yes. 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 Now, now, if God leaves you, he's a liar. And God is not a liar. God is truth. Yeah. Whatever God says, he, he follows through. Whatever God says, he does it. Because he's God, he cannot lie. So when he says, never will I leave you, and never will I forsake you, when you're in the depths of your story that you cannot share with anybody, God is there because he promised he will be. Never leave you. I'll never forsake you. In fact, Matthew chapter 28, Jesus reminded us of that when he says, Surely, I am with you always, 
even to the end of the age. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, remember this. When you're going through your hard times and you're, you're writing a story that you'll never tell anyone, remember, you're not alone. God is in the story with you. You may not feel him, you may not know him, but he's there with you because he promised I'll never leave you or forsake you. Here is the second thing I want to share as I close. Listen carefully. There's some things God wants to do in our lives that he cannot do because we won't let him. Oh, let, let, let me run that by you again. There's some things God wants to do in our lives that he cannot do nicely <coughs> because we won't let him. So God waits and allows us to walk through some places we have created. And when we are weak and helpless, God gets a chance to do what he does best. See, God is a fixer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And whatever you can fix, God can fix. And when we're weakest, God is strongest. He's strong in our weakness. And when we're in those situations, God comes around and he does his best work in us. You may not know what he's doing. You may not know what he's doing. But know this. When you're in a place where your stories cannot be told, God is there working with you to do his will. He comes when we're weak and he can now do his best work because we're at the place where we can't do a thing. I learned the, the, I learned the third one by experience as well. Our untold stories and our weakest moments makes us stronger yeah. eventually. Yeah. Notice I said eventually. <laughs> when we go through those times when we feel alone oh, yeah. and when we feel weak and helpless, yeah. When we don't want pastor or anybody else to know what we have gone through or what we are going through. If we hang in there long enough, God would make us stronger because of that. Yes. Yes, sir. Our untold stories teach us endurance. Yes. Yes, sir. Endurance. How to endure a situation. How to hang in there when, when, when nothing seems to be going right. Yes, sir. When failure is our companion, when we, when we just keep on putting one foot before the other one, he teaches us endurance. Yes. Our untold stories make us wiser. See, a lot of us think we're so smart. All right. <laughs> But every time we see somebody going to struggle, we, we have an answer right away. Oh, here's what you need to do. Here's what the scripture says. And we give answers instead of a listening ear. But when we go through places where we can't tell our story and God meets us there and works with us and make us stronger, it makes us wiser. So we can listen to people and then we can do something that the Bible talks about. We comfort one another with the comfort which we ourselves have been comforted. Listen, if you haven't gone through any place where you need comfort, you can't comfort anyone else. And our untold stories makes us wiser. Our untold stories, when we endure them and learn from them and, and go through them, puts muscles in our spirit. Gives us spiritual muscle. Makes us strong and, and potent and able to endure and withstand the darts of the enemy. 
That's what your untold stories do to you. It's you're hanging there with God long enough. Yeah. Listen. Yeah. And here's the last piece. When we have the untold stories and God comes in and becomes a part of it and works with us, he prepares us to do his will. See, God can't use shallow people. God has no use of people who haven't been through anything. Lord of mercy. When I read the story of Joseph and I watch what God allowed that brother to go through. Where his brothers put him in, in a hole and want to kill him. And then finally they sold him to be a slave. Go to Egypt. And you know, the Bible never told us how Joseph responded to each other. Went for the ride. <laughs> <laughs> never complained. Next thing we know, went to Pharaoh's household. And Pharaoh's mama had some designs on him. And when he refused, she lied on him. Yeah. Ended up in jail. Yeah. Where is God? Where it hurts. Yeah. 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 He went to jail and went through some struggles there. Eventually, he was elevated because he endured. Yeah. 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 And became a savior for his people. Yeah. He was yeah. ready to be used. But look what God brought him through. Yeah. Rejection. Jail, yep. lied upon, yep. made him strong yep. yeah. so he could lead a nation and save his people. Yeah. As I said to you before, God wants to do some great things with us, but he can't do it because we want to let him do that. Yeah. He can only use us when he meets us in our weakest place yeah. and make us strong and healthy. Yeah. Powerful. Yes. And then we can comfort one another yes. with the comfort which we ourselves have been comforted. Yes. Yes. I'm done. Yes. But I have a feeling there may be some people in this house who is in the midst of writing one of your stories yes, Lord. right now. That you can't tell anybody about. Only God knows. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you're in a house and you're in a rough place and you wonder, where is God when I'm going through this? I want to remind you this morning God is there with you. Yes. Because he said, I never leave you, I never forsake you, I be with you always. When you go to the fire, I'll be in the fire with you. When you're in the deep waters, I'll be in the deep waters with you. I'll never leave you. If you're here this morning, and you're going to a place nobody knows about, but it's a hard place. You can't tell anybody about it. But it's a hard place. I want to remind you, God knows. Yeah. And God is with you. Yeah. That problem that you cannot solve, God has an answer. Yes. That burden that is too heavy for you to carry, God bears the burden with you. Whatever you need this morning, God is here and He's with you. And now it's time to give. Those of you that are watching our broadcast online via Facebook or YouTube, if this is your week to give your tithes and offering, you may do so via PayPal or Tithely. You can also mail your payment into our post office box located in the city of Glenwood or 
come up to the church office during our office hours, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. And if you're visiting with us, please be sure to give your tithes to your church home. However, if this ministry has been a blessing to you and you'd like to sow a seed in good soil, we'll be sure you will receive a receipt for your contributions. God bless you. You can give through these portals on the screen as well. And thank you. The Lord bless and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Let's say amen and may God bless you.